Hey guys, it's been a while since we worked on MariaDB uh, on this particular channel. Um, so today I'm back with some more MariaDB stuff. Um, so MariaDB 10.5 is available now with column store uh, 1.5. And um, now we know that column store is has become a storage engine on, on the native MariaDB server. You don't need to install that column store um, as a separate server altogether now. So you can just simply download uh, the MariaDB software 10.5 and then it comes with uh, the column store by default. That's great stuff. So uh, we are going to do the same thing. We are going to download uh, 10.5, the latest 10.5 for CentOS 7. And we are going to set up a primary replica setup uh, with that software. And then uh, later on, we are also going to see how uh, can we connect those two servers through MaxScale and um, how your MaxScale performs your uh, query read write splitting and your server failover and all that cool stuff. We will we will see that. Probably it's not going to be a single video. Maybe we will split it up into two sections. One for uh, downloading and installing MariaDB software and then setting up a primary replica setup. And then the second set of second second video is going to be talking about. Um, setting up your uh, max scale and what are the requirements to get that done yeah so let's let's go ahead and do it um so we'll click on this uh, try for free of course so if you are a paid customer you can just simply go to the enterprise server link and uh, just click here with your mydb id and you will be you will be redirected to the enterprise login enterprise download page but for us um for this round we are going to download the community version so you can see that the latest one available is 10.5.4 uh, and then what we have to do is just select your OS that you want to download for or install it for and yeah so and then you will notice here that you will see um, a link here so you can download this by clicking here on this download button what will happen that this will download on your downloads folder for on your windows machine right but we are not gonna do that we will just copy this link and we are going to download this directly on our VMs, right? So if you look at it this way that we have these two VMs already running, these two are CentOS machines. So my IP address is uh, 192.168.56.71 and 72. And then I also have a .70 uh, server that is going to be running max scale. So uh, currently there's nothing set up there. These are just empty machines or empty uh, OS that is running there so I already copied the link um, so we can minimize this and I'm going to open up um, a terminal there it is I'm just going to make it a bit bigger full screen and just increase the font size a little bit and also going to split up horizontally and increase the size for this one also a little bit and yeah then let's do uh, grouping i want to broadcast to all the windows and i'm going to i don't wait a minute i can't broadcast right now so broadcast off yeah and ssh i want to go to the 71 from here yes i'm connecting for the first time training okay and i'm going to copy the same thing again and and let's go to the other machine all right we are in yeah now we can um start broadcasting all right so now whatever i do here on one terminal is repeated on the other machine as well so this makes uh, the life much easier um there is something wrong with this guy um, let's check the all right so i'm going to disable the broadcasting one more time yeah broadcasting off and i'm going to set the host name to my db 72 this one should be 72 yeah and let's connect to this node one more time so that we get the correct yeah so now we get the correct uh, prompt here right uh, let's broadcast one more time broadcast to all windows and i'm going to go back to this side again and just in case copy it one more time 
and we are going to say that um, I don't know whether I have uh, wget installed on this machine so let's install that in any way okay so wget is installed it's good and I will just say wget this guy all right so we are downloading this on both machines now um, it's going to take a few seconds uh, around roughly two minutes so I'm going to pause this video and then come back once it's done all right so the download is done um, my internet broke so I had to start one more time that's why you see uh, another file here uh, but anyway so the download is done so what we're gonna do is we are going to remove this particular file on both the sides because that's something we don't need and this guy we are just going to rename to ATA file there it is all right great <clears throat> so minus xvf so we are just going to extract this on this particular home folder wherever we are right now and then you will see we get a whole lot of rpm files right for both both the, both the servers and you will see that we have a, a folder with the same name as my tar file so we just need to go to go into that folder and we'll see what we have here all right a lot of uh, a lot of tar files uh, or some other rpm files and you will also think that we this also comes with the column store related rpm files so if we are going to install column store or we are going to enable column store on the same server then we can just install this uh, column store engine uh, column store engine and um, let me see I think there should be more than one yeah I believe there's this is the only one yeah so in 10.4 we had three three RPM files related to column for column store but now uh, yeah in this case we have only one okay that's great um, but anyway uh, back to our installation process so all right so the first things first um, we would need to install um, the common and the compact these two these two are the first one so they are generally around five rpm files that we would need to install uh, together with the galera component because galera is required by the server to start all right so um, so these two things we install using rpm hyphen ivh and um, uh, this common file and we will put a space here and then um, we will also install the compact yeah this guy all right so this these two will be installed together okay there seems to be some problem yeah let's let's take a look rpm hyphen iv not really rpm rpm hyphen qa and um minus i very all right yeah so i think this is this is what that's conflicting with these two rpms so we had a a standard centos uh, native mariri believes um, repositories or binaries that are already there so um, we will have to remove this first rpm hyphen e no dependencies followed by this file or this uh, repo binary all right so those those um, that particular guy is gone so if we do a uh, rpm hyphen qa one more time we shouldn't have that anymore now all right so i'm going to clear the screen now this um, rpm installation should work all right there you go so we have already installed the compact and the common um, rpms um, now it's it gets much easier um, so we would basically go and install rpm or we, we, we can just use yum now yum minus y install um, the shared library shared and followed by let's say 
uh, the client. Where is the client? Yeah, there it is. And also we can install backup because that's something that we will need. And followed by Galera. And finally we would select the server. Where is it? It should be here somewhere. Yeah, this guy. <laughs> right, so all of them all of them are selected. And then we'll just say install Y and it would start installing. That's how easy is it. So there are only those five RPMs that we need. So we need the common, we need the compact, uh, we need the uh, um, shared, and then we will need the client, then we will need the server, followed by your um, backup, yeah, and Galera, of course. So now if we check for grep-i MariaDB, we should see all those files here, yeah. So one, two, three, four, five, six, all right. So there are actually six of them. And um, yeah, so backup is not mandatory. So you, but yeah, but definitely you will need to take backups of your database. So backup is required if you have, if you want to use it on a production environment, but uh, just for the, for the working of MariaDB itself, you don't need this backup. So this is, backup is one of those uh, additional utilities. And then of course, uh, we cannot forget about Galera. Galera should be already there. All right. So uh, if you do a system CTL start MariaDB now, the server is a blue startup. Um, RPM, not really RPM. Um, MariaDB, and then yeah, so it's running on both servers. That's great. And if we directly go to MariaDB now, so you you will notice that we don't need MySQL prompt anymore. So we we now have our very own MariaDB command line executable. Right there it is. Select version and yep, there it is. So we are currently running uh, tender 5.4 um, slash MariaDB server. So engines, what are the engines available? So we have ARIA, MySM sequence, of course, InnoDB, CSV and memory engine. Those, all those standard ones are there. Okay, uh, that's that's all there is to basically install MariaDB server. Um, but if we um, if we check some of the variables that 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 are important every single time that when you when you install the server, uh, like for example, data directory. Of course, if you know. Uh, where you are installing it on like for example on CentOS it's always going to be wirelib mysql and also on red hat linux it's going to be wirelib mysql folder yeah so there it is so it's always going to be there uh, so that's one thing and then you would have noticed that i don't need to pass any uh, any password when i connect you will notice that i am currently logged in as a root user on the os itself right so my os user id is root user and when i connect to my db now um, if I do uh, select select user, I want to select which user I'm currently connected to. You will see that I am connected to the root user on the on the server as well. So um, starting with uh, tender four, uh, or rather you can say starting with all the enterprise servers, uh, your OS root user by default is now. Uh, tied to your uh, or rather your MariaDB root user is now tied to your OS root user so it's um, what we call as OS authenticated ID so now your root user on on the MariaDB server is tied to your uh, OS root user account so we can verify that very easily show create user oops user root at localhost let's see and yeah, you will see we have this root user account and then it's authenticated via a MySQL native password using invalid. So meaning there's no uh, MySQL native password right now. And then you will see or, or a Unix socket. So the Unix socket is what 
uh, that connects your um, your user account to your OS OS user. So as long as you have uh, a user account um, and also you have the same username account available on the OS, uh, you can use this Unix socket. Like for example, if I create a new user, create user, uh, maybe um, maybe for example DBA one for instance, right? At and also, yeah, of course, uh, all the Unix socket based users can only be local host based users. They cannot be um, of a specific IP address. So they would always be authenticated against your local account and cannot be authenticated against your other server. Again, if you if you want to authenticate your user account against LDAP or some other mechanism, then there are plugins available, but we are purely talking about the Unix socket plugin. Uh, so for that, you, ca you can't do that. So. Um, meaning it has to be localhost, right? So, um, so we are creating a user identified via, and we'll say Unix socket. That's it. All right. So my user account is created. Um, I am not going to give any grant to it. So by default, the grants would be um, the grant would be usage grant. Uh, so that means that this guy can connect to the database but cannot really do anything else um, but again uh, this is authenticated via unix socket right and there is no password you will see that i didn't define any password for this guy okay so i'm going to quit from here um, now if i connect using um what be minus u um let's say db1 I can't log in uh, because this this DBA one is supposed to be authenticated via Unix socket, and my current user is root user, right? Um, that is why I can't log in uh, to this DBA one. So for that, I need to do a su to DBA one first. But of course, I don't have the DBA one account on this machine. But if I if I did have it, I would be able to connect to uh, that machine. Right, so let's do that very quickly um, so I'm going to um, add a new user for example dba1 and and of course user and minus g dba1 dba1 All right so now I have a user called dba1 and the group also dba1 dba1 that user exists now um, so if I do as su to dba1 right so now I should be able to connect to the database right select the user and there you go so I am connected as a dba1 user um, with of course um, don't have any privileges yeah so I can only see the test database and the information schema so test database again the default database that is created with every server and uh, yeah i i can use test show tables but i i don't think i can create any object here yeah so test i i do have access to test database that's only that's only the playground for for every user that is probably that is the reason why uh, it is recommended to um, to run the MySQL secure installation after every installation so that you nobody uh, has access to uh, the database so now now I know that I can basically as an ordinary user without any access still go to the database but also be able to uh, do something in the server itself even though I'm not touching any production data of course but I still have access to one of the databases and that I can use to uh, play around all right so uh, that was a very quick introduction on um, installing the MyDB 10.5 um, on a CentOS machine and we did install it on two machines two servers uh, so the next thing we are going to do is um, we are going to create um, the replication link between the two sides so that's going to be an my next video um and um yeah hope you guys liked it um enjoy bye bye thank you